I just want to give you all a quick snapshot of A. Shulman, go over kind of what led us to looking for a software solution and kind of what's developed and how our workflow is from there now that we've implemented it. So just to give a real brief uh, summary of A. Shulman, we are a $2.2 billion publicly traded manufacturer of plastic compounds and resins. A majority of our business is overseas, probably 80% at this point. And we have brick and mortar presence in over 20 countries and additional sales relationships in additional countries beyond that. So although we're only 2.2 billion in size, we have a pretty complex geographical footprint. And that's led to the old hedging med method that we used to have as a result of, of that complexity. So a couple of years back, you know, what you would have seen at A. Shulman is, well, and we do still have multiple ERP systems, but as far as hedging was concerned, we had a, kind of a mixed bag of approaches to hedging. One of our regions was taking a regional approach and hedging everything for that region. We had several entities, especially in APAC and South America, would have been hedging on their own, an entity by entity basis, different standards and, and practices. And then the corporate office handled hedging for a few entities, especially ones that maybe we acquired through an acquisition. And so we would hedge some large exposures that we knew about separately. So it's kind of all over the place. And, you know, that method did work to a certain degree. And we thought it, it kind of covered a showman from, you know, extreme volatility out there in the marketplace. But it was obvious that there was, you know, more efficient ways to doing this. And there's some ways that we could definitely improve our results and improve those gain or loss results on the P&L. So I had hedged at a prior company, and that was a lot more simple, just a couple entities all on one ERP system. And I thought, although A. Shulman's a little more complex, you know, I could probably try to kind of navigate through and, and start implementing some standards. And, you know, I quickly found out after building some spreadsheets and and trying to train and educate some some of those that were out in the field hedging on their own on forecasting practices and other things for hedging the balance sheet. I realized that I had my hands full and one of my major challenges just due to the complex ERP environment was simply getting my hands on the data. So even in a real simple, for a more simple structured company, you know, it could take several hours maybe to do a thorough analysis on your exposures for a couple entities and several more hours if you're using some kind of forecasting and aggregating all that data. So now I was here faced with multiple over five or six ERP systems. Those ERP systems also had, in some cases, different environments within the ERP system that weren't standard. And then there's also sub-ledger systems and other data feeds going into those different ERP systems. So I'll click to the next slide to kind of show what our workflow looked like with fire apps, but you know, fire apps, the main initial reason why we contacted them was because we did want to get that simple approach to collecting all the data. And we have all the ERP systems feeding in to fire apps and exposure report. And for the first time, the company now has central visibility and a central place to go to kind of view and analyze all those exposures. And then as a side effect, you know, we've seen a lot of additional benefits as well, but it kind of works in nicely with the workflow, making those decisions, going to our 360T trading portal and, and into our workstation, and it's created a really nice flow, and it's a good place to get data on those exposures. If we didn't have some form of tool to do that, you know, just to collect the forecast alone, we probably have about 20 FX exposure forecast coming from various entities. And that alone would have taken several hours probably to analyze, to validate. And then on top of that, if you're having people in the field send you forecasts, you obviously would prefer to give them some form of feedback and a variance analysis. There's several more hours that would be involved if you didn't have a software support for that. So we found that there's been a lot of benefits to having this tool. We can load in all of our forecasts probably takes just five minutes. I can run a report at the end of the month when we get actual results in and kind of disperse out various analysis reports pretty quickly to everyone in the field, which will you know, hopefully improve their results as time goes on. So another benefit too, and I think uh, FLIR touched on this too, is 
if I would have gone probably my own road, building my own spreadsheet, I probably would have leaned towards more an approach of looking at each entity in isolation in a silo and reconfiguring your viewpoints in a software application is, is quite simple now. And what we ended up doing is we kind of flipped views and review all of our exposures at a portfolio level. So there's a lot of natural netting going on. We're reducing the amount of trades we need to accomplish to, to hedge our entire portfolio of exposures as a global company. I guess I just had that to, to briefly point out, you know, this is a process map we we developed that probably every company who does balance sheet hedging has to go through. Maybe you don't do every single step, but for the most part, these are the steps that are required. And this gets pretty detailed as far as loading in or analyzing forecasted data to kind of going through that entire hedging cycle. And again, if we were to do this on an entity by entity basis, it would be extremely time consuming. Or if you had multiple people out in the field kind of handling this, then you're just not being efficient as an organization. So again, a software application like FireApps can step in and several of these key critical points, loading in forecasts, loading in your actual data, making your analysis, and, and just saves us tremendous amounts of time that we wouldn't have being a pretty lean treasury organization here at the company. So one other thing I did want to point out too was the fact that, that there's things that come up during the month during this hedging cycle as far as you need to convert cash, which you'd normally want to swap out and do things like that because cash conversions are affecting your, your exposure position and, and that type of thing too if you're going off a manual spreadsheet with multiple entities is just another thing that's going to take a lot of time. So an application that can help you make those adjustments, whether it's doing your true ups or adjusting for your actuals and replacing a forecast, or if you're adjusting based on new data you receive, adjusting based on cash conversions, then that type of thing uh, in a more dynamic software can be more easily handled. So just to point out a few of the other positive impacts we've seen is, again, and the key win for us was just simply having the visibility of our exposures for the first time. And you know, on top of that, if we were to do that hedging cycle in a more decentralized approach, we'd be having about 10 or 15 individuals getting their hands onto the FX process. So that leads to risk. It leads to just inefficiencies in general. And now with one to two people, we can basically handle almost all of our hedging for the company. So we've also seen a lot of natural exposure netting. M&A was, was a big thing for us as we continue to expand through acquisitions. You can get someone on board with your hedging process pretty quickly now, whether you have them submit some kind of manual report to you temporarily, or you go through the effort to get them connected direct into the system. You can, you know, depending on how much time you want to put into it, you can get them on board very quickly and start capturing those exposures basically within a week or two after uh, that acquisition is effective. So, and another great thing that we just found as a result of doing this project in general was kind of the, the change and influence it had on the organization to start looking more at FX as a process of digging into those exposures and getting that visibility for the first time. You find that uh, you know certain entities are handling accounting slightly differently or are treating things differently. We've decided to more formalize our approach to uh, determining functional currencies when we create a new entity. And there's been a lot of great results as, as a result of the FireApps project.